My name is John Bookstaver. And how did you get involved with the choir? Well, back in 1980, I, uh, uh, I was starting graduate school in chemistry at, at Wash U. Um, and I had been thinking about joining this choir. Um, and there was a Jesuit uh, also in the chemistry department at Wash U named Bill Nelson. I was talking with him and telling him that, and so he, he was in the choir. He brought me down uh, one Sunday morning, uh, and uh, my original intent was to, you know, be in the choir, pick up some things while I was in graduate school, then when I graduated, I'd move along, and 41 years later, uh, 41 years, a wife and three kids later, um, here, here, here I am. <laughs> How has it been coming back after so long away? You know, I've always made a distinction between what the choir does and who the choir is. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do music, and, and that's it's been nice to sing together again, but the biggest loss uh, through COVID uh, was the loss of that community. Because that is foremost, I think, what the choir is. It's an incredible community. And, uh, you know, the spirit works th through us. Um, and uh, as individuals, none of us sound as, as good as we do as, as a group. Part of that's physics. Most of it is grace. There have been times when uh, when I know I haven't sounded all that great, and those are the times when people come up and tell me how moved they were. I know it's not me. That's the Holy Spirit. Um, this group, it's really a family. Mm. Um, they, my wife and I met in the choir. We. They helped us get married. They helped us baptize our kids. They've helped us bury our parents. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of months ago, my wife was diagnosed with ALS. Mm -hmm. And from the time that we got that diagnosis, I knew that there's not anything that any of those people wouldn't do for us. Mm -hmm. So we felt that support. It's an incredible pr prayer group. Um, and so, that's been the greatest blessing in coming back, yeah. uh, is just to be together again. How does being in the choir affect how you view the Mass? It's, uh, you know, when you're, when you're doing music, it's, it's easy to get distracted because you're always thinking about, okay, what's the next thing? And there are times when we're not thinking about what the... <laughs> And then it's like, oh. <laughs> um, and, and so, really it is, I think I experience Eucharist most through that community back there. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, it's palpable, yeah. just. the way God works in that group. And I, I think that's, that, that is one of the biggest, uh, biggest ways that it affects how I participate in, in the liturgy, I think. If someone wanted to join the choir, what, what, what would you suggest you would do? You know, I'm glad you asked that. Um, because some of us have, have been talking about that sort of thing. And for, for a, a parish as old as ours, um, we are really still the first generation of the college church choir. Um, if those who know the history know that it, you know, there's this mass over at the Fuse Memorial that uh, 
Cardinal Carberry said, stop doing it or moving it, move it to a parish church. And, and Bob Houlihan, who was the pastor at the time, said, come on over, and they did. That was in the early 70s. Um, and while I've been in the choir uh, 41 years, there are probably half dozen people who've been in there longer, longer mm -hmm. including my wife, and she'll be very happy to tell you that. Um, but, uh, and, and I'm 65, and I'm still below the median age of choir members. So there really needs to be, and we need to start having, as a parish, not just a choir, but as a parish, we need to start um, having some conversations about succession. People have, I think people are intimidated about to, to join the choir because they, they think that all of us have these magnificent voices. I'm here to tell you that ain't true, all right? Um, honestly. Uh, and and the, the choral sound, as I said earlier, part of it is physics, the, the, the way that, that the individual waves from each of our voices. Um, uh, interact with each other creates a choral sound that's much better than and it's better than the sum of the parts um, and so people should not be intimidated uh, they and as far as, as commitment goes yes we practice every Wednesday evening uh, pretty much through the school year it, into June we take a break in the summer uh, and come back in the fall. We try and take one Wednesday uh, a month off when we can, just because we, we people have lives. Um, but uh, I have gotten more out of that group than I have put in. And I, I'm not being falsely modest there, because I know I've put in a lot. I've still received much, much more. It's well well worth the investment of time and energy and what you'll find is a community that that uh, you're not going to find anywhere else. Yeah. So people who are interested in joining the choir, just even come up on a Sunday, just talk to Ray, Chirac, or Sue Martin uh, after Mass and tell them you're interested. Uh, we had a couple of people do that just, uh, just recently and, and they've joined the choir and they're fitting in uh, very nicely. So I'd encourage anybody who has any thoughts at all uh, about uh, a desire to, to be a part of the choir, please come join us.